Okay, if we may wish to download uh, industrial production, um, one possibility for United States is to use the Federal Reserve of St. Louis database. So we do a Google search, download data. Um, Board of Governors Federal, Federal Reserve Industrial Production and uh, check the format format download is in Excel so download okay we open up the industrial production uh, we can see the detail uh, notes here, enable editing. So going back from 1919 all the way up to 2015, there's data uh, on industrial production. It's industrial production, economic indicator, measures real output, all facilities located in the United States, manufacturing, mining, electric, gas utilities. Uh, since 1997, industrial production has been determined from 312 individual series based on 2007 North American industrial classification, so on. Okay, so you can read the content. Now, we might like to look at this. So we could perhaps graph, so to graph it, insert, and it's going to be a line chart, and we have the period involved, <clears throat> and we can see going from 1919 all the way to 2014, this represents the actually here represents the crash, 1929 crash. It looks modest compared to here, but probably percentage-wise this is greater than here. Um, and likewise there seems to have been an explosion in output, slightly ex explosive type of output during World War II and then a correction back. Um, we had a period of the great moderation, plausibly 2000 millennium, and then the 2007 crash. Now, to put a trend to this, if we wanted to observe a trend, we could add trend line and pick a polynomial. And if we use an order of two, it's a quadratic. We don't want to set the intercept to zero, so we leave that alone. We would like to display the equation and display the R squared and close. So if we put a trend here through the data series, it's, it facilitates our view of where production could have been. Uh, so if we have this stable type of increase in output over the period, uh, times when the output seems lower than trend, the quadratic trend, uh, maybe a period of underutilization of resources. When we are above trend, maybe um, we have more explosive type growth, more overheating in the economy. Okay. We could also set out this trend so we can delete that or put it to one. Yeah, delete. And go back again to the start and 
build more incrementally how we might construct a trend using a quadratic. So for each time period, we could say one month, two months, three months, four months, and pull that all the way down. And then likewise, if we were creating a quadratic, if our relationship was going to be IP is equal to a constant plus time and plus time squared, we take this time period and we square it to the power of two and then pull back. And what we would like to estimate is industrial production is equal to some constant plus B1 times time plus B2 or B2 is and B1 are coefficients times time squared. Okay, so to make this regression, we use linest, linest, open bracket, what are the known y's? What are the known x's? No x's. So we take these two, time and time squared. And do we want a constant in in our relationship? We want to have a, a constant of true and true for other stats as well. And return and perhaps uh, because it's there's going to be three coefficients constant and two estimated coefficients on dependent on independent variables we could widen this and come down and control shift enter And perhaps we could shift this down, insert, shift down, and we have a constant. We have V1 and V2. So in when using a Linest, the order of the variables changes. So this value here we took to be IP and this to be time and this to be time to the power of 2. Then we change the order of the output from the Linnast regression reverses the order that we might expect to see. So how do we, okay, we move this over, insert, and insert again. Shift cells right, and let's look at our fit. And let's set it out so it's equal to a constant, F4, to lock the cell reference, plus, plus beta times 1, F4, multiplied by time, plus B2, F4, multiplied by time squared. And we pull this down.
and we can set out our graph. Okay, so we can insert line. Let's see, let's do it this way. Take these two series again. And we can insert line. And bring it up. I'll just bring that up. And I'm bringing, bringing it up by cutting and pasting. And then we can put the trend through. So insert, select data, add. And this time we put in the fit. And the series of values that we're putting in here are these ones. And we hit OK. And we go back up. We go back up. And you can see how we've constructed the trend. Now, is this like the trend we saw before using the inbuilt uh, Excel trend line? Add polynomial to, we won't set the intercept to be zero, we want to display the equation R squared, close, and the values that we have here are somewhat different, yet the trend, if we go in deep, the trend seems to follow a similar pattern. Okay, so although slightly different, the parameter coefficients, the constant is different, the beta 1 is different, and the beta 2 is different. Um, and these are all positive, whereas um, the, beat the equivalent here, B1, Zero, but again, it's the time period that has been regressed here, and that's why, in other words, x here denotes the time period, whereas here, for this regression, we use time and time squared. Also note, uh, the r squared here is similar, it's the same as the r squared given in the Linnast regression. So if we think of this as being the coefficients, coefs, uh, below we have the standard error. And this variable here represents the R squared, which is the same as that reported by the trend line in Excel, in the Excel graph. To construct the output gap, output gap, we might take the following IP minus the fit or the trend divided by the fit. So in this instance here, that would represent. IP minus uh, bracket IP minus fit divided by fit and we'll pull down and this gives the series of measures for output gap and to observe that in a graph 
on this graph we can interpret in the following video.